Hello, this is Francis from uh, McCaffrey Crafts and uh, just answering a bunch of questions today. So I'm making a, a few of these videos in a row. So that's why you probably see me wearing the same clothes, but I'm uploading these videos on different days. Uh, so again, um, I had a question. Um, can you describe to me the, uh, the, the finishing process on a, a, a black turn? And, uh, you know, it's not, not quite an easy thing to, to kind of answer in, in one question because it depends on a lot of factors and on what you want to achieve. Um, you know, you start off the process by cutting the black torn. You always will cut it a bit longer than you actually need it. Um, so after you, you cut the, uh, the, the black torn, you want to seal the ends of it pretty quickly. Like, you know, you don't want to, to leave it for too long. And uh, there's many, many ways in which you can seal it. So um, whatever product you have handy, if you go into any hardware store, they'll have loads of loads of things to, to seal it. You can seal it with any paint you have going around. You can seal it with beeswax traditionally, like whatever. There's a million different ways um, to seal the wood and um, they all serve the purpose that you need it. But like, no matter, even if you seal the ends, it will crack um, a little bit sometimes. So you always cut it a bit longer. So if it is some cracking as a seasoning, you can cut off the cracks if you notice them before they get, get too deep and too problematic. Um, you air the sticks out uh, in a shed with the heavy end down and that process can take up to two years depending on the, the thickness of the wood. Um, if the wood is quite thick, um, like say for about, if the shaft is about an inch, you know, usually you can, you know, season it about, about two years and then if the handle is really thick, um, sometimes you might need to give that a bit longer. Um, you know, there's, there's a few ways which you can check um, like usually as you're seasoning the wood and you think it's seasoned, you can try weighing the wood. And if you notice the, the weight of the wood keeps dropping off every month that you're weighting it, you can see that the sap is still kind of, you know, coming out of the wood and it's getting lighter and lighter because when wood is freshly cut, it's quite heavy. And as it seasons, it's going to get a bit lighter. So you kind of like look at the graph. So like, you know, it's dropping, 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 then it starts to go sideways a little bit and down and down. You know it's getting then to the, the bit. And uh, you can also take, a, you know, a knife or a scissors or something like that, and you can scrape away in the bark. And uh, if the bark isn't showing green, it's starting to season that there. You know, you'd be surprised, like you, you'll cut a black thorn and you'll scrape the bark a year later and the bark is still green underneath it. A year and a half later, you scrape it and still could be green underneath it. So you want to, <coughs> like that's another way, you just kind of scrape it just to kind of see if uh if it's if it's green uh so then when you have the piece of wood that that's uh fully seasoned um the next part of the the process would be you'd have to uh straighten it that sometimes there'll be uh, you know, bumps and curves and s shapes and sometimes it's kind of cool if it's balanced with with a few of the curves in it but usually you have to um you can only straighten the wood when it's been fully seasoned if you try to straighten green wood and you straighten it uh it will bend the back as it cures and it dries out it'll just go back to the the same position over time and there's no there's no way around it the wood has to be quite seasoned for you to to straighten it and you straighten it as best you can uh, you, you heat up the wood you can do it with steam or heat gun or you know there's many ways to do that and then you have to put it into this just the straightened position like you know you can use i think i, I did a video ages ago car jacks or you can use like bend like if it's if it's a thin piece like a hiking stick you can use your hand and just bend it into the right shape. But <clears throat> with black thorn, you kind of have to get some vices and get, you know, you have to hold it into position after you dry it and yeah, or, or heat it up, I mean, and then you have to wait and you might have to do this process like, oh, maybe seven to 10 times over a few days and things. It can take a while to, to, to straighten the black thorn because you have to do a little bit, little bit, little bit. Um, it's almost a craft in itself of, of straightening a black thorn stick because like if you, <clears throat> you know, bend it too much, it could snap, you know, if the wood is a bit rotten, it snap, you have to make sure you put the right amount of pressure on it. You have to know by the thickness of the wood, you have to know what cracks you can get out. You have to know if the knot is on it. You know, there's there's actually, you know, a lot in straightening a, a black thorn as well, because it's a quite quite a heavy piece of wood. And, you know, you, you they're valuable and they're hard to get, so you don't want to mess it up um, when you're straightening it or you put too much crack or you try to bend it too quickly or the wood's not heating enough like the wood must be hot enough and you must you know do you must do it heat it up for about 10 15 minutes maybe longer even in some cases you have to get the temperature right 
and uh, you don't want to burn the bark if they're like move the, the, the heat around on it as well and to get a good distribution of it. Um, so yeah, there's there's actually a, like one of the most time consuming parts of, of making the stick can just be on, on trying to straighten the, the piece of black thorn wood it, and it takes a while and it's like step by step. You need a lot of patience. You need to little increments slowly, especially if you have a really thick piece of black thorn and you just want to bend it heat it up, leave it settle, bend it, heat it up. You don't want to like yank it and try to, to break it all in one go. Um, so there's there's a skill to that. So when you've got it like straightened then, um, <coughs> what I like to do then at uh, at this point is, uh, you know, I kind of will cut out the, the rough shape of the handle and I'll look at the handle, I'll visualize it, I'll hold it in two hands. I'll see if there's any nice features on where the handle would go to, go to be and the, the top piece of wood. And then I, I get just a handsaw and I will just roughly just cut in every direction just to kind of give me the kind of <coughs> outline of the, the shape of what I want to go. And uh, then I'll get a rasp. Um, you know, I, I like to use those those Japanese Shinto ones. I just find them a bit bit easier um, to use. Like they, they just go through it. Like black thorn is a very hard, dense wood. So you want a really kind of like good good rasp to go through it and you use a few different rasps until you get the shape of the head you want. Then you start with very coarse uh, sandpaper, like really heavy coarse ones. And you use that initially on the black thorn and you work your way down to, to, to finer kind of coarse as you do. And then you have your, you know, your, your head of the stick. And at this point, uh, you know, I would probably, um, you know, put on uh, a sealer or, or something like that just to kind of seal the wood at, at that stage. It's something that will kind of seep in under the finish or sorry, under the wood and just kind of make it a bit strong. And then after that, I'll kind of like look at the shaft. I'll sand down the bark a bit and try to sand down a lot of the thorns that, that are on it. I might do that step a bit earlier as well, probably before I do the handle, like sand down the thorns uh, on the stick. And uh, yeah, and then I'll begin the process of like uh, saying, right, is this going to be a natural bark finish? Uh, does the bark look really interesting or will this be a black finish? And um, the black finish looks good when there's like plenty of knuckles on it. And, you know, there's, there's many ways in which you can finish the stick. And then you have to see if the bark is really thick or heavy or, you know, it's like, you know, there's 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 certain types of bark. Like sometimes the bark can be for some from the reason it goes this like a really brownie color as a seasoning and then you, it doesn't look good when you kind of sand it and you're like right this needs to be painted black the shaft sometimes it will retain some of that purplish hue and you can kind of sand it a bit and get get like this array of colors which which is quite quite nice so you can do something like that as well so there's various ways in which you can kind of like finish the uh the, the stick um then after you do uh finish the stick and you have the, you put down the, the primer or you can put down a sealer then you put on primer and then you kind of like will uh, paint the uh the the stick to uh to, to do that getting a little interruption here when i'm making a youtube video so uh i'll continue anyway someone's just coming into the kitchen to to get some coke or a drink or something like that uh so i'm about eight minutes into this video i'm not starting it over again so i'll just continue so what you will do then is um you know, you will put down like a, a primer and you'll get some some uh, some good black paint. Uh, you know, again, it depends on what you have in your local hardware store. Um, you know, you can get, uh, you know, you, you want to get a black paint that sticks very well. Like, you know, when you have a bark and you're just putting on the black paint, like straight away, it's going to soak into the bark and it's going to go down. So that's why if you kind of seal it beforehand with a sealer and apply it, but then sometimes <clears throat> the black paint and the sealer you want the black paint to like you know stick well to whatever sealer you put down before it as well because sometimes if you don't the black paint will come off like pretty quickly if you're rubbing or, or putting any friction against it as well so you must you know pick your primer you know pick your black paint decide on what what finish you you want to get it um mostly you want it like with black thorn <clears throat> uh you want to make it a little bit glossy uh not like several layers of yacht varnish where i see which some people do and it's horrible it's like really thick heavy dense type of finish um for me i prefer a more subtle finish like sometimes i do put on like on the natural bark ones more of a kind of high gloss lacquer type of finish if it looks good like it depends like you know it's not like i have one particular finish and I use everything with one finish. And I think everyone keeps like, what finish do you use? What, what finish? You know, it's like, um, 
it depends. Like I keep saying that, it depends on how you feel, <coughs> how the bark. Sometimes you want to, to use this type of finish. Sometimes you might use this type of finish. If you're using a wood stain, like sometimes you use like some kind of wood stains and you kind of try to blend in the color and you, you put on a wood stain, then you sand it, you put on the wood stain and sand it and you get a kind of little design or array of colors. And <coughs> um, you know, I do that in the handles as well as, as uh, you know, it depends on how I feel and, and what it is like on the piece of wood. If the handle looks pretty bare, there's not really too much going on it. Um, you want to kind of use your kind of artistic mind to say, right, um, you know, if I put in little, little light bit of stain and I mix the stain with the finish, um, <coughs> and then you kind of put it on, you sand it and you put it on again, you sand it down and you get this kind of like, you know, a little kind of array of colors. And sometimes it looks kind of pretty cool if you leave a few, like if you, you've you sawn a bit of the wood or you've used a bit of the rasp, you can sand it down, but just leave a little bit of the lines of the rasp in there and then you can put a wood stain that kind of seeps in and it <coughs> it gives quite a nice design. It kind of gives this kind of old antique look to the handle as well. So there's, there's a multitude of ways in which you can finish a handle and it really depends on how you feel about it, what you think it is. You gotta think about it. You gotta look at the wood and you know, from experience, you just know, oh, this is going to look good on this type of thing. This is going to look good on, on this type of thing. And uh, so you can finish the wood many ways. Um, you know, you always want to put a sealer, you know, and then you like, I'm a great believer in light, thin coats. Uh, <coughs> you, you know, a few, you don't need a lot of coats. You just need a few light, thin coats, sand it down, a few light coats and the finish. And um, that's all you need to do. Uh, you don't want to like put really heavy coats on um, it's kind of the the lazy approach you just throw on a big heavy coat and goes there you go and it looks looks you know it looks all right but you know if, when you put the heavy coats on if people are, are grabbing the handle a lot and moving it and moving it and the friction on it you know you need to finish the handle a little bit better so that if some people are, are holding the handle it's it's you know you finish it a bit different than you would the uh, the, the shaft of the the stick as well <coughs> and then if someone has a specific request that they want to use it for fighting stick you know you have to to, to kind of think about it and think of what finish uh, you want to use so <coughs> that's kind of like just the overview of um you know the a, a chat about the the whole kind of process that that i would go through to the uh, the final final product and different things like that and uh, i usually just put a rubber ferrule at the bottom and I usually will just like, you know, taper the wood at the bottom and put the ferrule on. Uh, <clears throat> I don't tend anymore to, to put metal ferrules on them because like you put the metal ferrule on, they don't work well on, on modern pavements and um, they're they're quite noisy as well. They, they you know, they're not as um, secure as well if someone is, uh, you know, they can be a bit, bit uh, you know, if someone's going to slip or something on a metal ferrule. And um, I know some people say, oh, put the metal ferrule on and put the rubber cap over it. But, you know why do the two of you just want to use a rubber cap like it doesn't make sense and you know all you do all all they do with a metal furl is like you just dent you put you put the furl on you get like a piece of uh you get a nail and a hammer and you just dent a few sides in and it, it holds the grip but they always come loose <coughs> they're not like an efficient thing they might look okay just you know on honest initially but uh I, I I just find them less uh, less problematic to use the the rubber furls and then yeah you have your your final product and again that's just a kind of talk through of of my process of what I do and um, I suppose everyone has their own kind of way of way of doing things uh, but that's the approach that that I usually take on it so thanks for for watching okay bye bye.